Hello guys. So today in this video, we will implement a single layer of a neural network with only two neurons in it. And we will try to generalize it by making use of weights as matrices. So it will work for any number of neurons in a layer. Okay. So let's get started. So before jumping into coding directly, I want to show you a architecture uh, that we will be working through today. Okay. So yesterday we have seen this and implemented uh, in my previous video, uh, we have seen this particular architecture and implemented this as a single neuron. Okay. So in this video, we will have two neurons in this particular layer. Okay. So we will have one neuron and this is the neuron two, neuron one and neuron two. Each will have its own bias associated with them. We will call this as B1 associated with neuron one and B2 as the bias associated with neuron two. Okay. So let me quickly clear this out. Okay. So this is B1 and this is B2. So what happens? So each neuron will have its own working, right? So it will have its own linear transformation and it will apply its activation function, right? So I have divided these neurons into two steps. So, so the first step is linear transformation and whatever, out, whatever the output is from the linear transformation, we will apply activation function onto that value in order to obtain the output from those neurons. So in this case, we have two neurons, right? So we will have two outputs. Okay. So one output from neuron one and one output from neuron two. So output one and output two. So each neuron will have its own set of weights. So in this case, in my earlier video, we had only one neuron, right? So we, it had four sets of weights associated with it because we had four features in our training data point. In our data point, let's forget about training right now. Okay. So let's say we have a data point, a single data point X and it has features X1, X2, X3 and X4. So we have four features. So since we have four features, each neuron associated in subsequent layers will have four weights in a set associated for each neuron. So in this case, in today's video, we have two neurons. So we will have two sets of four weights associated with each neuron. Okay. So for that sake, we will represent the weights associated with this particular first neuron, neuron one as W11, W12, W13 and W14. So this is how the naming convention goes, W11. So this first one represents the neuron number. Okay. And this second number represents the feature number. Feature number. Okay. So if I say W13, so this is the weight or the link of the third feature with this particular neuron. So W13 is this particular line which is associated with third feature of the first neuron. So similarly, if I say W21, so 2 here is the neuron number. So this weight is the link between the second neuron and the first feature. So W21, second neuron and the first feature. So similarly, W24, it's the link associated with second neuron and fourth feature. So this is that particular link. Okay. So this is how the naming convention is set for to represent the set of weights. So what we have, we have two set of weights, W11, W12, W13, W14. So these things are associated with neuron one. And similarly, we have the separate set of weights W21, W22, W23, W24 and these are associated with neuron 2. Okay. So now what we have to do? We have to apply linear transformation for each of these neurons and also we have to apply the activation functions for each of these neurons. Okay. So let's call the linear transformation from these neurons as Z1, the first neuron and from the second neuron, the linear transformation, let, let us call it as Z2. Okay. In the same way, the activation of the first neuron, let's call it as A1 and activation from the second neuron, let's call it as A2. Okay. So now we will see the equations to compute Z1, A1, Z2, A2. Okay. So let's have a look at it. So here the neuron one computation, the computation that goes in within this neuron. Okay. So that's what I have written here. So Z1 is equal to so what are the weights associated with neuron 1? It's W11, W12, W13, W14, right? So W11 into X1, W12 into X2 plus W13 into X3 plus W14 into X4. And then we will add the bias B1. So this is the linear transformation of neuron 1. Okay. And we'll take this as Z1. Then what we'll do? We will apply the relu activation function 
on to this z1 to get our a1 value so this a1 is the activation or the output from neuron 1 okay so similarly we will do the similar computation for neuron 2 but now by considering the second set of weights w21 w22 w23 and w24 so that's what i have written here so in order to calculate the linear transformation of neuron 2 i will name it as z2 okay and z2 will be equal to w21 into x1 plus w22 into x2 plus w23 into x3 plus w24 into x4 plus b2 so that's what i have written here z2 and a2 will be we will apply the activation function on this z2 and the activation function in this case will be rectified linear unit okay so this is how we will implement it right now and towards the end of this video we will generalize this uh, and we will combine these weights set of weights in the matrix and then we will see how we can generalize it to more than two neurons in a layer okay so let's first implement these two linear transformations for these two neurons and also we will compute the outputs so for that let me go to python and then start coding okay so here i have initialized the input values to some random values and these are the weights associated with first neuron weights one weights two is a set of weights associated with second neuron bias one is the bias value associated with first neuron bias two is the bias value associated with second neuron now this is the relu method that we have seen in my earlier video where i have implemented only single neuron okay so now what we will do we will need to implement the linear transformation z1 z2 and calculate a1 a2 so for that let me just give it a comment here linear transformations for neuron 1 and 2 okay so that will be z1 is equal to i have it copied here so let me quickly copy so z1 and z2 okay so i have my weights here okay so it needs two blank lines so that's okay so z1 is weights 1 into inputs right so weights 1 of 0 into inputs of 0 weights 1 of 1 into inputs of 1 weights 1 of 2 into inputs of 2 weights 1 of 3 into inputs of 3 plus we will add the bias associated with that particular neuron so if you want more clarity i can have for neuron 1 and the second line will be for neuron 2 okay so this is how the linear transformation is done for each of the neurons now we will apply activation functions activation on z1 and z2 and we will store it in a1 and a2 variables okay so let's say a1 is equal to it's a relu relu of z1 and a2 will be relu of z2 okay so now we will just see the outputs frame linear transformations values of linear transformations that is z1 and z2 and similarly we will print out the activation outputs or we will say neuron outputs it will be a1 and a2 okay so now if i just execute it so you see these are the values so linear transformation values are 26.505 and minus 4.145 so this value is for neuron 1 and this value is for neuron 2 and if we apply the relu the output of the neuron 1 will be 26.5 because relu is max of 0 comma whatever value it is and for the second neuron the output will be 0 because between 0 and minus 4.145 the maximum value is 0 so that's why we got the output as 0 for the second neuron so this is how you can implement two neurons in a layer okay so now what happens if we have three neurons so we'll have another neuron here and we will have another set of weights associated with it correct so neuron 3 will have its own set of weights associated w31 w32 w33 w34 okay and its own bias and for this what are the computations linear computations let's call it as z3 and we will apply the activation on z3 let's call it as a3 so we have to go on repeating these stuffs again and again okay if we 
uh, if we can take it in a loop, we have to run so many loops. We have to run a loop with so many number of neurons. So if we have three neurons, we have to run the loop for three times. If we have 10 neurons in a layer, we have to run the loop for 10 times. So in order to avoid, avoid the loops, what we will do, we will arrange these weights in the form of matrices. Okay. So when I say matrices, we will make use of NumPy arrays. So it will be a two dimensional array, rows and columns. Okay. So what we will do, we will consider these two neurons and arrange these two weights in the form of NumPy array, 2D NumPy array. So if we arrange these two weight sets in a NumPy array, we will get a NumPy array of say 2 comma 4. So each row will be with respect to one neuron. So one row will be for, first row will be for first neuron, second row will be for second neuron. So this particular thing here, this particular row is for neuron 1 and this particular row will be for neuron 2. And similarly, we will have the bias as a array or a list. We can have it as an array or a list because it's just a scalar value, right? So B1 comma B2. So this will be our bias B. So B1 is for neuron 1 and B2 is for neuron 2, right? So now we have arranged this in matrices. What is the advantage of this? So what we'll do, we have considered a single data point, right? Single data point X, where we have four features, X1, X2, X3 and X4, correct? And if we consider this as a uh, matrix or NumPy array, it will be of shape 4 comma, it, it will be 4 comma. So it's a 1D array. It's a 1D array. If you check the shape of, in our code, if you check the shape of inputs, it will produce the output as 4 comma 1, 4 comma, that's it. So there is no 1 here. So it's a 1D array. So now what we can do, we can use the matrix multiplication. since weights matrix is of shape 2 comma 4 and x is of shape or inputs is of shape 4 comma we can easily have these two in a matrix multiplication because this condition is satisfying number of columns in the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix right so this is getting satisfied so the resulting output of this two matrix multiplication will be 2 comma 1 right so two rows and one column. So now we will make use of this and then treat W as one matrix and X inputs as another matrix, right? So we, I have written this side by side here. So what I have done, I have just written this X1, X2, X3, X4 as a column vector. So you can take this as a column vector. Okay. So here, W11, W12, W13, W14, W21, W22, W23, W24. By the side of it, we have X1, X2, X3, X4. So this is our inputs. Correct? And then we will have our B1 and B2 added here. So what we will do, if we multiply this, if we just take these two matrices and multiply this, okay, if we do the matrix multiplication, we will get this output. W11 into X1 plus W12 into X2, plus W13 into X3, plus W14 into X4 as our first row. And in our second row, we will get W21 into X1, W22 into X2, W23 into X3, W24 into X4. So this is our second row. So now if you look at these two values and the equation of Z1 and Z2, so those are same. Z1 is W11 into X1, so on and so forth up to W14 into X4. And Z2 will be W21X1, W22X2 up to W24X4. And in that, we will add biases, right? So, by using matrix as a way forward, we can avoid the for loops, okay? So, we will see how we can implement it in Python, okay? So, let's get to that. So, now we have this. We have seen how we can implement one by one. We will see how we can make use of NumPy array. So, for that, I need to import NumPy. So let me import numpy as np, okay, and then I will arrange this w1 and w2 in a weights1 and weights2 in a w matrix, or let's call it as weights matrix. Weights is equal to np dot array. So I want it to be a two-dimensional array, right? So array within array. So if you want to take it as a list, list of lists, l o m list of lists, okay? So I will have these two lists inside that particular array. 
So this is my first weights set, which will be governing the neuron once calculation. And this will be my second weights set, which will be governing the second neurons computation. Okay. So now I have these two weights. Okay. So this is my weights matrix. Now it's a numpy 2D array of shape 2 by 4, 2 rows and 4 columns. So now what we will do? We will say bias is equal to np dot array of I will have this in a single dimensional array 0 comma 3 right bias 1 is 0 associated with neuron 1 and 3 is the bias associated with neuron 2. So now I have this bias what I will do I will compute z1 and z2 a1 and a2. So I can compute it in one line now. So let me just call it as z is equal to np dot matrix multiplication weights comma inputs okay and then we will add the bias right so z is equal to z plus bias okay so then what we will have we will have our activations a1 and a2 so what we can do we actually have to implement a redo method redo function which is compatible with numpy numpy arrays okay so for that what i will do i will define another method define numpy redo which will take z or you can call it as x doesn't matter right so what i will do i will say return np dot maximum of 0 comma z okay so now if i just say numpy relu of z i will get my activations from both the neurons so now what i will do i will print so i'll say using matrix operations the outputs are just for the sake of clarity i have written this so so that we can compare what are the values uh, obtained using matrix as a way forward and what are what values we obtained when we applied this one by one z1 z2 a1 a2 we calculated separately right so with this i'll just print print linear transformation outputs so i'll just copy these things I'll just copy these two lines linear transformations instead of z1 and z2 it's z instead of a1 and a2 it's a okay so now i hope everything is fine let's hit it okay so these are the values without using matrices 26 and 4.145 these were the linear transformation values and these were the act output of the neurons neuron outputs 26.505 and 0 now using the matrix we should be getting the same outputs so are we getting it yes we are getting it right so these are the outputs for linear transformation z1 and z2 so this is our z1 and z2 and similarly a1 26.505 and a2 0 right so now what happens you can generalize this idea for any number of neurons so instead of two if we have three our weight matrix would look like we will have another row here so it is equal to w11 w12 w13 w14 w21 w22 w23 w24 and we will have another row here w31 w32 w33 w34 right and we will have our x here x1 x2 x3 and x4 so if we multiply it instead of getting uh, this this will be of shape 3 by 4 and this will be of shape 4 by 1 so earlier with two neurons we got 2 by 1 as output correct two values we had and now we will get three values as our output correct so that's it uh, if we have four neurons we will have another row here w41 w42 w43 w44 and the same way you can utilize the matrix multiplication it doesn't matter how many neurons you have this particular matrix thing will work without any issues okay but one thing you have to make sure you have to make sure about this method np.matmul and the shape should be compatible okay so that that's one thing you have to be aware so probably i will cover a separate video on that where we can achieve the same thing using np.dot. So we can treat this as vectors and use a dot product. Okay. 
So that's another way. Few people will use that, and we will also see about that how we can make use of np dot dot. Okay. So I hope you guys understood what I'm trying to do here. So in this video, we have implemented to a layer of uh, artificial neural networks with two neurons in it, and this idea can be generalized for any number of neurons. Okay. So hope you liked the content and understood what I was trying to say here. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Happy learning. Bye-bye.